This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Barney the Dinosaur. You know him. And if you don't, ah, oh, you're gonna. He's purple. He loves you. You love him. He has forward-facing eyes, granting him the necessary depth perception to hunt prey. He has a bike. It's Barney! Oh, Barney! Hey you, my name is Thomas Tomscar Ridgewell, and I'll be fully honest with you. Before I started working on this video, I'd never really watched Barney the Dinosaur. I was around four years old when he came to the UK, and I was already into way cooler stuff by then, like trains and ignoring signs of autism. My knowledge of Barney was pretty much limited to knowing how hated he was within pop culture. It was the 90s, the decade in which we realized that hating stuff could be your entire personality. And boy, did we. But when my girlfriend suggested popping on her favorite childhood movie, how could I say no? It's just a silly, goofy movie about a lovable, albeit slightly unnerving, dino guy, right? This won't leave me with a myriad of metaphysical questions about the godlike powers of this lumbering purple nightmare, right? What's the runtime of this video? Oh god, no! Barney is a dinosaur from our imagination. It's beautiful. Hey, <laughs> Barney's Great Adventure left me with so many questions, such as, huh? And what? But mostly, what in God's name is Barney the dinosaur? Well, he's a dinosaur. Is he? Because I don't think he is. The only thing Barney has in common with dinosaurs is that they were both put on Earth by God to test our faith. And I've now lost mine. <laughs> Barney is a god, or a cryptid, or both, but whatever he is, we've been sleeping on him for far too long, and it's time to expose this unfathomably powerful being for what he is. And what is that? Oh, I'm gonna tell you, I have done such an obscene amount of research for this video, I have watched a concerning amount of Barney the Dinosaur for someone who doesn't have kids, and I must unburden myself of this knowledge by passing it on to you. But before we can get into what Barney is, you're gonna have to know who Barney is, and for that, it's time for a little history lesson. Chapter 1, World War 2. We won! Chapter 2, Barney the Dinosaur. The year is 1987, and parent slash teacher Cheryl Leach just wants her little boy to sit down and shut up. She plops him down in front of the TV and puts in a VHS tape called We Sing Together. Why is it spelled like that? I don't know, but he loves it. He's calm, he's engaged, and they play this tape over and over and over again until it stops working. It's no longer effective at keeping his attention. So she heads over to the video store and she says, hey, uh, more of this, please. It's great. It's like crack for babies. Don't give crack to babies. <laughs> but the video store says, we don't have any more, and the wait list for the next one is super long. So she says, you know what? I don't have time for this. I'm gonna go make my own VHS with Blackjack. And hook, no, not that. But it's gonna star an incredibly realistic dinosaur because my son loves dinosaurs. And, and that's the plan right up until someone goes, please don't, that's really, it's gonna scare children. She's like, okay. And they made Barney the Dinosaur! Peter, Peter and Jelly. Cheryl really looked at this tape where a kid is in bed and then their toy comes to life and then takes them to a forest and they sing and dance about camping and said, Hey, can I copy your homework a little bit? Because, come on, Cheryl, that's just stealing. That, naughty, naughty, you can't do that. Also, smash. Cheryl and her crew then spend the next three years making eight VHS tapes of Barney and the Backyard Gang, which exist solely to pop on for children so they'll just sit down and shut up. This is a time before iPads and Coco Melon and Baby Shark and sensory videos. This was the only option that these parents had to just, please child, pl Shut up! And I gotta say, this opening logo for Barney and the Backyard Gang is just the most delightfully creepy thing I've ever seen. Everyone trying to make analog horror in this day and age wishes they could just, they could look at what they- Look what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. Essentially, Barney and the Backyard Gang is about a doll that comes to life through kids' imaginations, and then they go on adventures. Kind of like Calvin and Hobbes. And if you don't know what Calvin and Hobbes is about, it's about a doll that comes to life through kids' imaginations, and then they go on adventures together. Which is kind of like Barney. Hope this helps. And now, a word from our sponsors. Hi, son. Granddad, that was a war crime. Oh, hey, Dad, what's up? Son, I was hacking your computer earlier. What? Hacking? And I noticed in the browsing history that you've been... No. ...curious about girls. Oh. 
Uh, now, it's totally natural for a boy your age... 33. ...to be showing an interest in S-E-X, which is why I figured it's time that you and I had a little talk about the birds and the bees. You see, why? when... A man... Why? Why didn't I get Surfshark VPN? With Surfshark VPN, you can secure your passwords, data, and browsing habits from even the most well-meaning of prying eyes. So click the link in the description and use code TOMSCARFRIENDS to get three months extra for free. But that's just your mother for you. Now, let's talk about the rectum. It may <coughs> Do it now before it's too late. In 1992, Barney finally makes it big and is picked up to be a TV show on PBS. It's renamed to Barney and Friends instead of Barney and the Backyard Gang. Why, you ask? To remove references to gang violence. Apparently, the, the Barney was too... It harkened back too much to crime. Kids are watching this and thinking, Ah, oh boy, I should join a gang. I would join a gang if they got to do shit like this. <laughs> Seems awesome. I wish I had friends. But aside from the production values increasing, the format stays pretty much exactly the same. There's a bunch of kids, there's a doll, the doll turns into a dinosaur, they all sing and dance and land together, the dinosaur turns back into a doll, rinse and repeat for 268 episodes, 66 specials, 19 albums, a couple dozen live shows, and one feature-length movie before it all wraps up in 2010. Throughout the 90s, Barney was simultaneously the most beloved icon to toddlers across the globe, and also the most abhorred beast in pop culture. I'm so Glad we love each other. Damn it, this wussy crap is pissing me off. People loved dunking on Barney, sometimes even literally, to such obsessive degrees. This was a time largely before internet discussions existed, so people were straight up making magazines to talk about how much they hated Barney the Dinosaur. Whatever makes Bluey, like, crack for millennial parents, the exact opposite was true for Barney and the Boomers. Great band name. Barney was inescapable, is what I'm trying to say. He was like Rick and Morty for toddlers, whatever that means. Even when you weren't watching Barney, you were still watching Barney, because I can't even begin to list all of the parodies of Barney there were in media. Aw, oh, go on. Okay, I will. There's Blarney, 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 Baloney, Barnaby, Bernie, Benny, Smarmy, Sammy, Smoochy, Sydney, Arnie, Carney, Georgie, Drooby, Humphrey, Murray, Wally, Terry, Thingy, Lumpy, Lester, Boomer, Bobo, Zebo, Mr. Potato, Dinosaurus Rex, Carlosaurus Rex, and this unnamed Barney parody from Beavis and Butthead that allegedly inspired a child to burn his two-year-old sister to death, leading to all mentions of fire in existing episodes of Beavis and Butthead to be removed and the word to be banned from future episodes of the show going forward. And Blarney. Thank you. So now they're on the same page about where Barney came from, it's time for us to discover exactly how powerful he is. And to do that, we're going to go on a journey together. A journey of discovery. But as you will soon learn, not all journeys are fun, and some discoveries uh, shouldn't be made. Sometimes ignorance truly is bliss, because we're going to watch Barney's Great Adventure, a 1998 uh, box office flop that, to be fair, doesn't deserve to be. It's actually a delightfully whimsical little movie. Uh, but while watching the movie, I was on IMDb reading the trivia, and I read that this movie is the only time a character is shown to hate Barney. And that just, just fascinated me. Because it means that this movie features Barney's nemesis. Barney has an enemy. Something that needs to be overcome, conquered, defeated. And of course, it's a child, so in a way this movie is about Barney beating a child. Let's crack on with it, shall we? <laughs> Here we go. The movie begins with Cody, his younger sister Abby, and her friend Marcella being driven to their grandparents' house for the week. And just right off the bat, I love Cody, and I relate to him completely. The Matrix hasn't even come out yet, it'll be out in 1999, and yet he is completely ready for it. This movie is so mean to Cody. They spend the whole time painting him like he is some killjoy, moody, awful child, but he is actually deeply sincere and reacting normally to everything in his environment. He sees a sign for an Apple Day festival, whatever the fuck that means, and he is saddened at the prospect of not being able to go. Oh. This kid doesn't hate fun, he wants to have it. The great adventure, spoiler alert, is the thing he wants. He wants to have a great adventure. And... It... <sighs> Justice for Cody, alright? One of the first things we learn is that in the universe of this movie, Barney is 
a franchise. The Barney and Friends TV show exists as a TV show, so it's not set in the world of Barney and Friends, but obviously it's not set in our reality, it's set somewhere in between them, in, in, in a movie universe, in a fictional universe, where the Barney TV show exists, which is also the same place that the movie Godzilla and Jurassic Park exists. Seems like a fucking nightmare place to live, if I'm honest. Dinosaurs everywhere. But anyway, let's put a pin in that for now. <coughs> because they finally arrived at the farm, but they can't go in it because it's still buffering. <coughs> Funny windmill joke. Good job, me. Thanks, me. I love you, me. You're so funny. Cody is a little down in the Dumpy Dumps because he's stuck on this farm for a week, and who should show up to cheer him up but Barney, the doll. Because again, in this universe, Barney is just a, a franchise. So he's just visited by some merchandise. Cody, oh Cody. And then he gets hit in the head with a basketball. Oh, fuck. And you could easily interpret the rest of this movie as a concussion. Maybe I should have done that. You know what? Let's end the video there. Hey, you. Cody takes the doll and hides it in a bathtub, telling the girls they'll need to use their imagination if they want to find him. And this brings us to Barney's first godlike power. Power one, Barney can manifest into the physical world through your imagination. Like the theme song says, Barney is a dinosaur from our imagination. And Barney can be your friend too if you just make believe him because Barney lives inside our minds or more specifically, he uses our minds to get out. You see, Barney seems to operate like a parasite, a mental virus, if you will. Once a child is aware of him, he can manifest physically through their imaginations and while tangible, he spreads the awareness of himself to more children, all of which become viable hosts through which he can manifest physically and spread endlessly. Which I think is fine, actually. So Barney comes to life bending the legs of the bathtub with his weight, which enables me to calculate his exact mass using science. Yeah, he's fucking heavy. So it's worth noting that Barney does not require a unanimous collective belief to form physically. Cody straight up does not believe Barney exists, and yet Barney persists. He cannot be stopped. So the gang all frolic into the barn and sing a delightfully whimsical song about using your imagination. And in this scene, the girls and Barney are having a lovely little song and dance. They say, oh. And Barney's like, shut up, Cody. Yes, they are. They believe it, and that's what's happening. And I think that this scene is actually kind of literal. I think that what we are witnessing is Barney's powers failing to work on Cody. I think that the girls really do see what they believe they see, and Cody doesn't because he doesn't believe yet. And therefore, Barney's abilities are not working on him because, power number two, Barney can control your entire perception of reality. Since Barney lives in your mind and can be summoned by one's imagination, it stands to reason that he has a total control over your imagination and therefore your perceptions of reality because this seems to be how he achieves most of what he does. Whenever he's with some kids and he's making wacky stuff happen, it's pretty likely that he is just making them, for lack of a better word, hallucinate these things. In a day at the beach, he tells the kids to just use their imaginations and that they will all go have a great day at the beach together and then they do. So, He's making them see shit. He's fucking with their heads. <laughs> so to misuse Orkham's razor, I think the simplest solution to this is that he's just making them perceive what he wants them to perceive. He's controlling their minds, basically. What a guy. All the while, Cody flatly denies Barney's existence, and then as soon as their song is done, he immediately attempts to unalive Barney. And I do not mean unalive in the TikTok, I'm trying to avoid censors kind of way. I mean, he tries to make Barney cease to exist, to no longer be alive. He's not necessarily trying to kill him, he's just trying to undo Barney's existence. I do not believe in you. Does it work? Of course it fucking doesn't, because Barney says That's okay, Cody. I believe in you. What does that mean, Barney? What does that mean? Is everything a figment of your imagination? Am I a figment of Barney's imagination? <laughs> But like I said, Cody has zero influence over Barney's 
presence, showing that Barney is parasitic in nature. He, he does not need the consent of his hosts to exist. He's just gonna do it anyway. Later that evening, Cody insists to his grandparents that Barney is very much walking around inside their barn, and naturally, they don't believe him, because Barney is just having a great time gaslighting this little boy, I suppose as punishment for not being immediately charmed by him. As soon as the grandparents go inside, Barney walks around the corner and goes, whoa, uh, where are your grandparents? I guess I just missed them. Don't worry, I'll see them later. And Cody says, yeah, but will they see you? Because Cody is aware that Barney isn't entirely real. And that's by Barney's choice, because guess what? We got more powers. Power three, imperceptibility. Barney seemingly picks and chooses who gets to see him, who gets to perceive his glorious physical form. In the earliest version of the theme song, it said, My mom has never seen him cause she doesn't know our secret. Implying that if you do not know Barney, you cannot see Barney, but that's not necessarily true because people are constantly being introduced to Barney for the first time, namely children, and they don't know him yet. Who are you? This is our friend Barney. So it just seems to be he chooses not to reveal himself to mostly parents. Yeah! Your mom will hear us. He has shown himself to some parents, like in the episode of Very Special Delivery, but mostly the only time adults can see him is when they also knew him as a child. We've been friends with Barney since we were all about your age. <laughs> so basically, once you know Barney, He's with you forever. Like I said, he lives in your mind once you know him, and also you can see him and perceive him. He also very much reveals himself to the elderly in episodes like uh, Grandparents Day. And this is Barney. Well, hello, Bar Barney. <laughs> nice to meet you, Barney. I think he just chooses to show himself to people that will either keep his secret or not be believed. Because let's be honest, if grandma told you that she saw a giant talking purple dinosaur, she's going in a home, isn't she? So anyway, Barney makes a dog play the guitar and I just don't have the emotional bandwidth for that right now. So we will come back to it a little later on in the video. Dog's pretty good though. Barney, desperate to work his literal magic on Cody, says, Come on, kid, what gives? This shit usually works on everyone. And Cody basically says, I don't know, man. I'm not vibing with this shit. And Barney says, Well, I know what will cheer you up. Making a wish on a shooting star. And then he makes one happen. Which raises multiple questions, for which I do not have the answer. Does Barney make that shooting star happen? Can he summon... Meteorites? Did another dinosaur rub him the wrong way 65 million years ago? I, I don't fucking know. Or did he just know that meteorite was going to be there, making him omniscient? Both options, terrifyingly powerful. God, he scares me. And we know the shooting star is real and not just a projection because when no one else is watching, we, the audience, see it hit a windmill. I'm overanalyzing fucking children's media again. I'm so, what is wrong with me? Anyway, the next day rolls around and Cody just once again has an insane amount of drip and Barney, <laughs> Barney is built like a fucking Pixar mom. Ooh, baby. <laughs> Smash. So naturally they have another little sing and a dance and who the fuck is this guy? God Barney, in playing it safe you told us to avoid strangers because you don't know if they might be bad people and here you are allowing the kids to frolic with this guy. Get out of the shot, Jean Cardinal Animal Wrangler. It is not your time to shine. Anyway, Cody finds what the shooting star was and guess what? It's a big ass egg, which he is immediately enamored with. I mean, Cody is so completely on board with this egg. He's like, great. This is the adventure I wanted. His wish has come true. Hooray. Do they then stop dogging on Cody and claiming that he's a grumpy little killjoy? No. No, they don't. Because this movie does nothing but assassinate Cody's poor little character. Justice for Cody. Ah, oh, fuck. Baby Bob's here. God damn it. Look, I don't agree with Barney bashing. I think he's a nice guy. He's doing his best. But I fucking hate Baby Bob. <laughs> Fucking hater. He went me blanky. Fuck you. So the gang head off to get answers about this egg, but Barney is immediately distracted by a crying baby and heads up and just talks to it. Oh, you're tired of the same old look. Because Barney can understand the baby's wants and needs. He speaks every conceivable language. He knows your thoughts and your innermost desires. What? 
Is there anything Barney doesn't know? Anyway, now they're on a horse riding to their neighbor Mrs. Goldfinch's house because apparently she knows a lot about birds and eggs, I guess. But despite the fact that the kids have apparently been on this journey before in their lives, they say that they don't remember it looking like this. I don't remember it looking like this last year. And I think that that is because now that Cody is engaged and on board with Barney, Barney's magic is working on him and his perceptions of reality are beginning to warp. But then again, maybe that's not it either. Because, power number four, Barney can take children to other dimensions. In Barney's campfire sing-along, he pulls all the children into his sick little dimension through their dreams. They weren't together. He just pulled them in in their sleep to have another little song and dance. You know how he is. Shimmery, shimmery. Oh, where are we? <laughs> uh, don't. Don't do that, Barney. But he's not just limited to mind dimensions. In A Day at the Beach, yes, they use their imaginations to go to the beach, or at least that's what they're told. But at the end of the day, when the kids have gone to bed and Barney's back into being a doll, their mum finds a bucket full of seashells and sand, very strongly implying that they actually went to somewhere else, to some other dimension. And also, we never see that mum ever again after that episode. I think that's why Barney doesn't reveal himself to parents because once they get wise to him, he's got to deal with them. Hell, knowing all of this, you could even argue that the, the school and the treehouse from Barney and Friends that he brings all the kids to all the time aren't real. They're just being pulled into there either physically or mentally like some adorable Freddy Krueger kind of guy. Fucking put Barney in a Freddy Krueger outfit, I guess. That's the joke. Good content, me. <laughs> so sure enough, now that we're fully under Barney's spell, we arrive at a thoroughly uh, bonkers house with a crazy bird lady who is just completely comfortable with Barney. Why is she comfortable with Barney? Uh, because she's probably not fucking real, all right? She's probably just another one of his manifestations, his projections, or she's a real person that is also just under his little manic spell where he just makes everyone happy and joyful and that's not necessarily a bad thing drugs can be fun <laughs> so the kooky bird lady gets a good look at the egg and says i'd hate to be the bird who laid that egg because i simply cannot go a single media analysis without a fucking reference to a goddamn cloaca the kids get into her fantastical house and they are amazed and impressed by everything which is weird because apparently they've been there before but they haven't because this is different it's a different house they're, they're under a bunny spell they're under bunny spell and now they're all singing and cody is singing too because he is fully fully in. God, this number is genuinely delightful. This movie has so much whimsy, I love it. He also hits Barney with a pretty brutal microaggression, which Barney takes like a champ. What if it's a horror reptile thing? Sorry, Barney. Huh? That's okay. Anyway, they find out that the egg has something called a dream maker inside, and once the egg has turned all the bright shades of the rainbow it's gonna hatch and this definitely won't be a toy they're gonna try and sell us at the end of the movie and then the egg falls out of a perfectly egg-shaped hole which is very funny and lands in a truck that drives away whoa the hijinks wacky <laughs> The kids thoroughly Tears of Kingdom a cart together and they floor it after this truck, but not before Barney either warps their perception of reality to give them all wacky hats or just creates matter out of thin air. We'll, we'll come back to it, I guess. The guy driving the truck with the egg on it for some reason has a full fast food kitchen set up in his car. I don't know why that's not right. He just does. He's got a deep fat fryer in there, a milkshake maker, and when he comes to an abrupt stop, you know he's dead, or at least severely disfigured, because that boiling hot fat goes everywhere. It is over for him. So close. <laughs> And meanwhile, Baby Bop is at the Apple Day Festival, just thoroughly fucking ruining the vibes for everyone. I hate Baby Bop so much. Now at the Apple Day Festival, nobody even raises an eyebrow at Barney's presence. And this could be because he's working his magic on everyone. Uh, it could also be because we're in some sort of warped alternate version of reality. But it, it's also just as likely to be because we are in a universe where the Barney franchise very much exists. So people just think, oh, cool. There's a Barney costume at this festival. That is an appropriate thing to have here. I mean, there's other mascots there. There's a Southwest Airlines mascot for some reason. I guess they had that knocking around. There's even a tomato in a top hat that says, Hey, Barney, last time you'll see. 
Is it because they think it's just their friend Jeff uh, doing some Barney work? Or is it because, power number five, Barney is immortal? Now this movie never really gives me a perfect opportunity to segue into this point, but Barney is old. He is very... Very old, in fact. Whenever Barney meets a, a, an adult, usually some sort of celebrity, they'll say that they knew Barney when they were a child. And in Barney's magical musical adventure, he goes back in time, a thing he can also do, and meets a king of old who tells the children that, yes, he also knew Barney when he was a little one. So yeah, Barney's old, right? Maybe like a few hundred years? That's quite a lot. Well, in Barney's birthday, he says that he is two dinosaur years old, which translates to two hundred million years! <laughs> wow, that's a lot! Two hundred million years. That is... that's a lot! That's a lot! <laughs> so, does Barney come from the human mind? Probably not, given that he predates it by roughly 199,700,000 years. He, he's, he looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. They didn't exist 200 million years ago either. What is he? And if Barney cannot be killed by the unstoppable passage of time, then what can kill him? Well, apparently high winds and a lamppost. That'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> also, hold on, in the episode Look At Me, I'm Three, we learned that BJ is seven and Baby Bob, who I hate, is three. Now, do they mean that they are seven and three human years old? or dinosaur years old, because I can't handle the idea of Baby Bop being 300 million years old. I don't want to live in a world where that thing cannot and will not die. Okay? I need to be free of Baby Bop. I need to know that the ravages of time will eventually claim her. Anyway, back to the movie. So there's another dance sequence, and then BJ, who again might be close to a billion years old, hurls the egg into a restaurant called Shea Snob, where Barney is about to make everyone sing and dance, because, power number six, Barney can control your mind. So we know that Barney has control of your imagination and therefore your entire perception of reality, but he can also just control your mind in general, your thoughts, your feelings, and also your actions. In the show, anytime a child expresses some sort of negative emotion, be it anger, sadness, disappointment, jealousy, Barney gives them one sentence and they turn that frown upside down instantly. No bad vibes allowed here. Oh, you wanna work through and process uh, those feelings? Too bad, kid. Fucking stop it. <laughs> And you might say, hey, that's fine. Barney's actually just a super convincing dude. He's a great uh, conflict resolution negotiator. But Barney can also make people do things they wouldn't naturally do, like sing and dance against their will. Do you remember the dog? Dogs don't normally play guitar. It's a sentence I just said out loud. <sighs> So Barney and the gang burst into this snobby restaurant and he starts distracting everyone with his funky little jazz number. And you know what? It truly is a funky little jazz number. It's been stuck in my head for days. That motherfucker can scat with the best of them. God, he's cool. Also, fun fact, Josh Radner from How I Met Your Mother is one of the dancing waiters. It's one of his earliest roles, except no, he isn't. That's not true, IMDB. Stop lying to me. It's this little French guy. Get your shit straight. Now, the people in this restaurant are severely not fucking with Barney's vibes, but he wears them down. He gets to all of them. And the ones he can't convince, like the band behind him, uh? boom, he sends them to the fucking cornfields. They're gone between shots. If you're not under Barney's spell, you don't exist anymore. You don't get to live in Barney's world. Don't I even like this movie, or am I just afraid that if I don't like it, Barney will make me cease to exist? Anyway, the egg makes its way to a circus, because of fucking course it does, and yo, is that Michael Davis, the comedy juggler? He's funny. <laughs> Why does he do that? He just throws the egg in the air. What a totally unnecessary dick move. So the egg goes missing for an extended period, and then we have a really weird Dark Knight of the Soul scene where everyone just starts shitting on Cody, telling him that he never even cared about the egg and that he hates having fun. You don't even did. Which is just demonstrably false and so contradictory to everything we've been seeing since he got this egg that he loves. He has been leading the charge on these escapades. Why are we shitting on Cody? Justice for Cody! He fucking loves the egg! Leave him alone! So the kids are all miserable now and Barney can't have that so he starts doing a little song and dance and their bodies start moving involuntarily. No bad feelings allowed here. These kids can't sit in these negative emotions for a goddamn second. They've 
got to start singing and dancing. And sure enough, it works. They, he, he brings them back around to the light side of the force and they're off looking for the egg again. Anyway, the egg is in a hot air balloon now. This movie is 70 minutes long and so much stuff happens. I gotta give them props on the breakneck pace of this thing. A lot gets done. I can't imagine a child being bored watching this movie, except for the, the, the one like minute where an old man sings about how much he loves his wife. Let me call you sweetheart. That was an odd choice. Why do they do that? Who cares? Get out of here, old fart. Hurry up and die. But Cody, who is now a fully indoctrinated disciple of Barney, he's seeing the whole world through Barney vision, suggests that they all use the power of their imagination to turn a log into a plane. And because we too are under Barney's spell, it works. Or does it? Power number seven, Barney can manipulate matter. I can argue as much as I like that Barney's powers are limited to your mind and perceptions of reality, but at some point you have to just draw a line and admit that this motherfucker can control reality wholesale. He can change matter because when a log turns into a plane and you're flying through the sky, you gotta say, you know what? You're just God, aren't you? There's just nothing you can't do. Spare me. There are simply too many examples of adventures he's been on resulting in physical physical objects being left behind to ignore it anymore. Remember the shells and the sand from the beach? That was real. The, the fucking egg hits the windmill. It's all real. He's doing all of it. He's just God. Ah! So they get the egg and they crash the plane and we know it's not in the kids' minds because the grandparents see it too. And Barney again is fine with grandparents seeing him because he knows that no one's gonna fucking believe him anyway. <sighs> so the grandparents are immediately and understandably terrified of him. Hey! which makes sense because, you know, man is not meant to lay his eyes directly upon the face of God. The mind cannot comprehend it. It's like seeing a biblically accurate angel. Barney should be introducing himself to everyone saying, be not afraid. And yet I still am. So anyway, the incredibly colorful egg hatches and what should come out but an incredibly not colorful gray little koala thing that I guess they thought was gonna be the next cool fad toy. And also fucking Baby Bop is there. God damn it, Baby Bop, fuck off. So Twink and the Dream Maker jankily floats around the screen, summons some particle effects, and Cody apologizes for hating Barney and gives him a big hug. And oh, I just realized the movie's about Barney bashing, isn't it? Yeah, the movie's a response to all the people that hated on Barney. And they're just saying, can you just not? He's just a nice guy, get over yourselves. That's what the whole movie's about. I get it now. So now that everything's over, Barney turns back into a doll. Baby Bob and BJ teleport out of existence, meaning I am finally free of her. But the movie can't end without one last parting shot, one last nightmarish implication, where we learn that Baby Bob is not gone. She's just invisible now. Meaning that she can be anywhere, at any time, and you'll never even know it. <laughs> also a baby talks, and it's weird. Oh, so what's all this been for? Well, when I started this video, I said I wanted to figure out just how powerful Barney was, but I also wanted to figure out what he was, why he exists, and what he wants, and you know what? I think I've cracked it. You see, Barney is a dinosaur from our imagination. What do you mean you already knew that? We've got so many mythical beings out there. We've got a little guy for just about everything. The Easter Bunny, the Sandman, Cupid, the Tooth Fairy, Elliot Goff. But you know what we don't have? We don't have a face or a name for imaginary friends. And I think it's Barney. Barney isn't just an imaginary friend, he's the imaginary friend. 200 million years ago, when the first dinosaur developed a high enough consciousness that it found itself in need of friendship, of companion and guidance, it created Barney from a need, and he came in the form of the most harmless, childlike manifestation of a dinosaur that that creature could muster. And since then, that's the role he's been playing. He was born of a need, and he has just been providing a service ever since. Barney is imagination manifest. He is a cryptid in the same leagues as Santa Claus and mermaids and Selena Gomez. And that's why he can hang out with all of them because he's one of them. God, his life is so much cooler than mine. But what if it's bigger than that? Because bear in mind in the movie, Barney is a fictional entity. He's just a TV show. And yet that doesn't stop him from manifesting in their reality. Who's to say we're not just in another layer of the Barneyverse 
right now. I mean, he exists in our imaginations just as much as he existed in theirs, and he was able to become real there. Why would he just stop there? What's to say he's not gonna show up here too? I mean, he addresses us directly in the movie multiple times. He's self-aware. He knows he's in a movie. You know this song, so sing along. If he's in your mind, you can't stop him. I mean, for all we know, Barney is no less real than any other documented theological being. Oh, you've read a book about Jesus and his disciples going on some wacky adventures and you believe in it so completely that you're prepared to do a whole ass crusade? Well, I've seen Barney in the backyard gang go to space. Barney is a god. He may be the only god and we are nothing but lucky that he chooses to be a nice one. After all, we've seen that he can summon meteorites. And what happened to those dinosaurs? Oh, well, that was a very silly video. When I went into this, I didn't know all that much about Barney beyond his reputation as being this really hated thing. And so I thought that maybe I would find a lot of salacious things. You know, I'd heard so many rumors throughout my life and one thing I found while working on this video is that none of them are true. They're either completely fake or the reality is actually very boring and completely unrelated to Barney. There's, there's, there's really nothing dark going on under the surface of this little purple fella. Baby Bop, on the other hand, is a war criminal and I will find- No, but I want to thank Hedge, who is a YouTuber and Barney fan. They helped steer me in the right direction for a lot of the research I was doing on this video. And also Eddie, who watched everything with me, helped me with the research, and just generally, uh, you know, endured my slow mental degradation as I worked on this stupid, stupid idea of a video. So, Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for whatever bad idea I have next. Tom Scott out. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Hey you, thank you for the money. Money. Hey you, thank you for. Thank you, patrons. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.